A brand new look at Jurassic World Rebirth has just been shared by Empire Magazine, alongside some new plot details and even dinosaur teases by director Gareth Edwards. This new photo showcases Scarlett Johansson's character Zora Bennett on some sort of tropical island with a custom gun in her hands. The image is noted for being our first dinosaur hunting still that looks like it's actually set in an actual mission to acquire the DNA from one of the three large beasts that the plot calls a quest for genetic material from the largest creatures on on land, sea, and air. Everyone is guessing that this takes place during that land portion of the story, which makes sense, but trust me, we've got a lot more to go over. What's going on guys? Hope you're all doing well. Now, I'm not going to beat around the bush or anything like that at all. The new information that goes alongside this image comes directly from Gareth Edwards himself, who says, quote, It goes back to what I loved about the original, with an embarrassment of riches, of different set piece type scenarios, and tense, fun action moments. There were a lot of opportunities as a filmmaker to have a lot of fun and try and play games with the audience. Gareth goes on to say that, quote, There are certain dinosaurs it would be a crime against cinema not to include, which may lead to further speculation on the old Spinosaurus coming back to this movie for the very first time since 2001. I've actually got another video coming out soon talking about how it almost showed back up very recently in something else entirely, but I'll go over that at another time. Stay tuned on the channel if this stuff sounds like it might just be interesting to you. Now, speaking of this image, Gareth talks about the mission Zora Bennett is on, which helps us learn a little bit more about what kind of character she's supposed to be, with, quote, she's looking for meaning in her life after leaving the military, and this opportunity comes along where, after it, basically she'd never have to work again. But through that journey, she starts to question the ethical rights and wrongs of what they're doing. So it looks like Zora is a former military lead that is basically offered a huge paycheck, but later on has a kind of struggle within about what exactly they're doing on this mission. Which sounds pretty good when you line it up with the big set pieces involving dinosaur action that Gareth Edwards compared it to the original movie. As for the location of this particular scene, some people seem to be under the impression that this is Isla Sorna from the Lost World in Jurassic Park 3. I mean, they got the long grass there, right? But I'm personally not convinced just yet. I say this because it really looks like the plot that they've revealed in other story points through articles are saying that the dinosaurs are around the equator, and some people even seem to be under the impression that it's far away from the Los Cinco Mortes island chain from parts two and three. I've even got a video out where I explain why I think the original idea was for the movie to take place on Site B. It's just a theory, by the way. I'm not citing anything, just my own personal opinions. But with further script revisions, we all know how it goes for newer sequels to these classic 90s franchises. Things change. So if it doesn't take place on Site B, a ton of other fans think it's going to be revealing Site C, which yes, is an actual unused concept they had in the past. Specifically for Jurassic Park 3, which all of the plot details they've been revealing for Jurassic World Rebirth, I gotta say, it does sound an awful lot like an alternate take on Jurassic Park 3, just in the same continuity. So there's that. Now, as far as Zora's character struggles go, I think the idea of a retired military veteran going on to the dinosaur island to retrieve DNA is pretty promising. But the whole angle of her struggling to accept the ethical rights and wrongs that they're going after, look, that could go one or two ways. Either she's unhappy about the way the dinosaurs are being treated, which, sorry, but that is really kicking a dead horse as far as plot points go for Jurassic sequels, in my opinion. In The Lost World, they ripped Eddie Carr in half. Yes, the baby T-Rex was kind of cute, but Roland Timbo is awesome, and the whole movie is way different than just dinosaur rights that we've seen in these newer things. And honestly, I don't want to repeat the same stuff over and over again. Maybe there's something else going on with the pharmaceutical company that we heard about, and that could be an even cooler and more original idea, ergo Planet of the Apes. If this DNA is really supposed to be the catalyst for developing a life-saving drug for humans, what is it that's making Zora have this inner turmoil in her character? What I think would be cool is if the crew themselves were dealing with the fact that the company thought they were expendable, basically thrown into the meat grinder just to achieve some sort of success for someone else like Predator. You're an asset. An expendable asset.
So believe it or not, there's actually a full on breakdown of even more information that's supposed to be coming out on the 21st when this magazine drops. But for now, this brief look at the movie actually shows us a lot of new things about it. For example, the actual look of Jurassic World Rebirth is way more akin to something like 2014's Godzilla that Gareth Edwards made with a color and moody sky background that he has here looking really, really different. I do like the fact that Scarlet looks pretty serious here as well. It's almost like this character is going to be wildly different from the sort of flavor that we've gotten over the last several Jurassic World movies. And I do think this image is reminiscent of, if not the actual look, the tone or feel of something closer to a Lost World than a Jurassic World experience, which you guys know me, I'm all on board for. By the way, the dinosaurs and dinosaur set pieces he's teasing sound extremely promising. Look guys, there are a lot of deleted scenes and concepts that David Kep, the writer of this new movie, left on the cutting room floor back when he wrote The Lost World and Jurassic Park 1. I've done videos on a lot of the different things that David Kep was going to incorporate into the first two movies, and since Gareth is saying this movie deals with a lot of the stuff that made him love the original so much, I think that we could be looking at some really inventive and fun ideas here. Now, what kinds of dinosaurs would this movie be a crime against cinema if it didn't include? Well, the staples like Velociraptor and T-Rex are obvious, but yeah, I do think Spinosaurus and maybe even some other fan favorites are definitely in the cards as well. The Spinosaurus, by the way, is an interesting one because if the animal in 2001 was the only one of its kind, does that mean that someone else cloned another one? Or is it literally supposed to be that one from Jurassic Park 3 that they want to bring back? You got to think about that when it's talking about this new plot where they're going after these animals that have all been around the equator. Could it be the Jurassic Park 3 Spinosaurus? Or is it something else that we've never seen before? A new clone, you know, just something to think about. With that being said, everything that they've been showing off for Jurassic World Rebirth, in my personal opinion, is looking really, really interesting and cool. I gotta say, I really do think if this movie works, it could very well save the Jurassic Park franchise once it's coupled with Jurassic Park Survival, the new video game that's going to be coming out soon. Scarlett Johansson's character looks very grounded, and actually, she does look like someone from Gareth Edwards' Godzilla, more so than what we got over the last few years with the Colin Trevorrow trilogy. I do think that this is going to be a film that not only brings things back to the original Jurassic Park tone and feel, but it's going to be one that launches, hopefully, and this is wishful thinking on my behalf, a brand new sort of era in Hollywood. You don't really think you'll win, do you? Things change. If we can get past the legacy sequel experience of them being kind of like cotton candy, bubblegum pop regurgitations of the same story we've seen over and over again and move forward into a brand new chapter of a legendary film series, you know, more akin to what it was like to go to the theater and see Revenge of the Sith or maybe even something like Gareth Edwards' Godzilla movie from 2014. Personally, I'm just hoping this movie delivers, but hey, whatever your own thoughts and opinions on this brand new image and the story details happen to be, I'd love to hear all about them in the comments down below. Now before I go, I want to thank everyone that's helped me build my channel over the years. I'd also like to thank every one of you guys who've watched my stuff. You've all been extremely cool to me. If you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate a like and hope that you'll consider subscribing. God bless you all. Christ is King. See you guys in the next video. And as always, take it easy.